everyone, welcome back to Rema Word with Holy Communion. We're so glad to have you join us today. We appreciate your support. It helps keep the ministry going for you and also for others. Today, we're going to talk about peace that reigneth. What do you mean by peace that reigneth? Peace that reigneth in our hearts, where we are not controlled by the news that we have heard around us or we are not easily uh, wavered but because of that peace that reigneth in our hearts it takes control over that fear it takes control over that that um fear that that in in insecurity and the uncertainty in our hearts is a peace that reigneth over that. Now we've heard of the Abrahamic covenant and we've heard about the good things that God has planned for us through His Son Jesus Christ. And now specifically in Ezekiel 37 26 it says, Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them, multiply them, I will set my sanctuary in their midst forever. Now let's just break it down into this verse, yeah? I will make a covenant of peace with them. How is that covenant of peace is possible? It's because of Jesus Christ. Through the birth of Jesus Christ, where the angels appeared to the shepherds and say, Peace on earth. This is the good news. The peace is here. So God says, I will give you a covenant of peace. But how? How is that going to take place? I will set my sanctuary in their midst forever. Now, the thing that he is talking about, uh, what the, the thing that God is talking about, is may not necessarily be a particular place. Place, but a sanctuary in our hearts where Christ dwells in our hearts forever. In other words, in order to have and obtain that peace, it is through Jesus Christ being in the midst of us, in the midst of our hearts forever. It may not be a particular place. Of course, we come to the, the church to worship together. There's that amazing sense of anointing and God pours out His anointing, God pours out His talents, and God pours out His, His love upon the people even as we worship together. But one of the most amazing things about what Jesus Christ has done on the cross is that we are able to pray at any time we feel fearful. Maybe you are in your particular workplace. Even in that particular place, you are able to pray and have that peace envelop you. Even in your household, that sanctuary is there because you are lifting up Jesus Christ. You are committing your, your cares and your worries, anxieties, everything to Him. And in that sanctuary, God pours out His peace. And so that's the covenant of peace. A peace that reigneth in your household, a peace that reigneth in your workplace, a peace that reigneth in, in, even in your studies, no matter where you are. In number Verse 25 verse 12, therefore, I, uh, therefore say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace. Now he's talking about Phinehas, where he was a priest who was faithful to God in a time where the people of God were wavered, uh, were wavering. He was the one who stood still and stand firm to the precepts of God. So Phinehas is the grandson of Aaron. And so it says, uh, God says to him, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace. It shall be to him and his descendants after him a covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Now, if you notice here, I already mentioned that he's the grandson of Aaron. Yet, how come God says again, I will give to him an everlasting priesthood? Isn't it already defined under his life that yes, he's going all already on he's already on the same path as what Aaron was or what Eliezer was but God says I will give to him an everlasting covenant it's like God renewing that again and because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel for the children of God it was like a renewing of the covenant of peace that God bestowed upon him Phinehas actually if you look at the name the it means three Israelites or it may be a combination of mouth and serpent. There's nothing much to his name. It's just three Israelites. You may think, well, this is just very ordinary man or just a very uh, a type of wallflower. We describe a wallflower to be someone that just sticks to the wall or it's barely noticeable at all. Yet God says to this barely noticeable, this nobody, this out of nowhere person with no not much particular meaning to his name except that it means three Israelites or maybe a, a, a mouth of a serpent. We don't really know in context what it actually means. But yet God says, I'm renewing my covenant with you. I'm giving you an everlasting covenant. I'm giving you that everlasting priesthood. God reminding him, hey, you are of a great heritage. It's like God reminding us, you may be a nobody or you may be someone that is like a wallflower. Nobody really notices you when you're coming in, when you're going out. Nobody really cares about you or there's nothing special to your name. You're just very ordinary. But yet God says, I'm renewing that to you. I'm giving you a peace that reigneth over 
all. I'm renewing that covenant of peace. And so God established a covenant of peace upon him. In John 14 verse 27, peace that God gives is not like the world's. The peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Troubled, do not be afraid. So the peace that God gives is not like the world's, right? Jesus says, the peace that I give to you, the peace that I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. It's not something that we have it physically or that we are staring at a particular nice painting or we are in, a, in, in Cameron Highlands looking at the view and then only with that peace is there or only when everything works out fine, we have peace. But actually, God says, I'm giving you that peace. Jesus says, I'm giving you that peace. It's not like the world gives in the natural, but it's something that you feel. So no matter where you are, you still have that peace. And I know maybe some of you will be having that uh, uncertainty or, or all kinds of thoughts of what is going to happen next year because it's going to happen very soon. And the day is leading up to it. There's so much uncertainty in the world. All kinds of things can happen. Just the same way how 2020, suddenly there was a COVID that hit and nearly the whole world was under lockdown. But we see that in spite of what's going to take place next year, God says, I want you to focus on the vision that I have given. Focus on the vision that I'm going to give for you next year. And that is the vision that's going to bring you through. Because I have given you that peace. Don't say that, you know, I, I'm still uncertain or I'm still shaky and I don't know what's going to happen. God says, I have given you my peace. My peace is the one that's going to reign in your hearts. And how is that peace possible? Because peace is a person. Peace, just like wisdom, it is Jesus Christ himself manifesting in our hearts. Jesus Christ himself in our hearts, living in our hearts. It is a sanctuary in the midst of us forevermore. So anytime we are afraid, anytime we are unsure, God says, look to Him. As you look to Him, you will find that, hey, actually the ground is stable after all because Jesus is the one that is setting the foundation. Because Jesus is the one that is leading you through. And let's come to the Lord's table. Pass every care and worry to him. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Take it, this is my body broken for you. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Take, drink, this is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen us unto eternal life. Let's pray in tongues and come to His throne of grace. God says, yes, we are living in a time of uncertainty, but I want you to watch. I want you to see my power being revealed. Soon the tables will turn. Soon everything will turn. And God says, I'm giving out my prosperity and my peace upon my people. God says, you may notice things that are in upheaval in the world. There are a lot of things that are uh, going on, but that is just the growing, the, 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 the pangs of, of that tribulation that is going to happen. And <clears throat> the what is spoken about in the book of Revelations. But God says, pay no attention. Instead, heed my word, heed my command, heed my instructions. Because God says, I am shifting things around. This is the time where I'm pouring out blessings more than any other, more than ever upon my people. I'm pouring that blessings out upon my people. There's going to be a shift where the wealth of the, <clears throat> of the, of the world will be shifted into the wealth of my people. 
God says, I want you to pay attention to my instructions. Pay attention to my instructions because God says, He is the one that's going to lead you into making the right decisions. <clears throat> yes, all kinds of things are happening in the world. God says, my precepts remain true or my uh, commandment remains true and my love remains true for everything that has happened in the world or everything that's going to happen in the world God says my kindness you know my kindness and you know my love and you know my faithfulness to the covenant you know my faithfulness to what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross and what has bought what has been purchased and bought for for you God says, don't look at the uncertainty. Instead, look to His love. Look to the fact that God is faithful and God is going to bring about that restoration. God is going to bring about that breakthrough. This is the time for you to go out and reach out to your friends. This is the time for you to be a, a good witness to your friends and tell them the good news that Jesus Christ is there. Soon they will see and they will be amazed and be at awe at how much God has prospered you and how much um, God has blessed your family. Receive that enabling power. Don't say you cannot do it. God says, I have given you power. And not just that, I'm giving you the creative ideas. I'm giving you, I'm enabling you. You feel stressed out because you're trying to figure it out on your own. You feel stressed out because you come trying to come in, come out with all the, the, the plans and ideas on your own. My God says, I will give you the plan and that plan will be the divine plan. It may be something so simple that you may think, hey, how come I didn't even think of that? But God says, truly, you will know that it's from me. I am the one that gives you the ability. I am the one that gives you that confidence. I am the one that gives you that, that, that wisdom in how to do it and the ways to do it because God says, I am the one that knows how everything is going to work out. I am the one that's in control. That fear be broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. He is your peace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.